Hey guys, it's Deborah. After my last video that I just did on the 70 Israel turning 73, the fig tree generation coming to a close, um, a lot of things, well, I got some confirmations about some things like that are related to that last video, dreams and just some confirmation that I want to share with you guys. And then also, um, yeah, I wanted to talk about, I didn't feel like I explained one thing, right? Which is um, Israel turning 73 doesn't conclude the fig tree generation. I, I mean, that's, I want to make that clear. I hope people know that it's 2028 concludes the fig tree generation, according to Psalm 90 verse 10. I believe it's Psalm 90 verse 10, which says a generation is 70 years, 80 if by strength. And the last years are trouble and sorrow. And then we fly away. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'm really sorry, but uh, at this point, it's kind of like advanced channel, I guess, about all the stuff that we've talked about for a while. So um, you can ask in the comments. But anyway, most of you guys know what I'm talking about. The point is, the 2028 is when and everything really ends. It closes up, if that's a generation, which we mostly, most of us believe we are interpreting this correctly. Um, so anyway, that being said, I didn't really like explain myself. I feel like the best that I could in that last video because people might be sitting waiting for May 14th and saying, oh my gosh, if May 14th comes and goes, the fig tree generation prophecy didn't get fulfilled. But it's because, okay, we need seven years to obviously seven year tribulation to fit into that whole thing. So Israel became a nation in 1948. Then 80 years is the longest it should go before the second coming of Christ. That brings you to 2028. 1948 to 2028 is 80 years. But there has to be a seven-year tribulation in there. Minus 2028 minus seven years bring you, brings you to 2021, where we are now, which Israel turns 73. So May 14th, even though Israel turns 73, it doesn't mean if we go past that slightly that the fig tree generation prophecy didn't work out. Why? Because it is is about the seven years are biblical years, okay? The seven years are biblical years, 360 day years. It is for sure. I can prove to you it is not Gregorian years. I believe God is possibly with the Gentile church working on the Gregorian calendar. That's how I believe. I believe, I, I don't know, but I believe he is. But when the church leaves because they are not Jewish, he goes back to Jewish years, okay? Which even when he says, if those days were not shortened, um, no flesh would survive, I think that could be have a dual meaning. Like one, he shortened it by making it seven years instead of making it very long. Um, so it's exactly seven years, but he could mean shortened it as in they were 360 day years, not 365 day years. Now, I want to make that clear because I feel like in the video, it made it seem like, well, if May 14th passed and then you had seven years, nothing it's not going to work out anymore like the numbers but it will and it does so the reason i think may 14th is key is because i showed you a verse um i can't remember the verse but it, it's it was something 514 i honestly my last video i can't remember what it was but it basically there's certain things that really make may 14th stand out in the bible like i, I think that date is 514 is key so we might not go past it but we might and um, but it would not be much longer. So I want to do some calculations with you guys to show you where things have to be so that the fig tree generation does not pass. Okay. Where numbers have to be and stuff like that. I wanted to do that because my last video, um, I did mention many, many times it, it doesn't have to be that it ends on May 14th, but I, I don't know. I feel like that would be a really big day. I mean, it's exactly the 73 year mark, but it just doesn't have to be because of the 360 day year. So we're going to do some math together. But first, I'm going to talk to you about a confirmation that I feel like I got about my daughter's dream. I hope you guys are following me so far because this is really important that you guys don't think it has to end on May 14th. Anyway, and I mean it, meaning the rapture has to happen. OK, so but it could happen. OK, so let's talk about the confirmation I got about my daughter's dream now. The last video, if you watched my last video, you probably should or <laughs> to understand what I'm talking about here. Most of you probably have. But my last video, I talked about my daughter who when she was 12, um, actually, I recorded the video on her birthday, which she turned 13. So she was 12 last year. And that's when she had the dream. 
she was either 11 or 12 or just turned 12, um, but it was basically a year ago she had this dream. So in the dream, she, and I've said it before and I'll just so briefly go over it. She basically said that she was up in a white room with her dad, my husband, her dad, and she was talking to him and I, she doesn't remember the conversation, but I realized, I interpreted right away that she was in her father's house. So her dad represented the father's house because it was her father. And then Jesus looked through a window, a small window. She said it wasn't a doggy door, but it was like that. It was a small window. So he looks through a window. And when he looked through the window, um, he said to her, five, seven, no, sorry, seven, 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 eight, one is important. And 17 is important too. Now all that stuff, somebody asked me in my last comment section, if I could tell them what's the significance of 17 or find the video. Honestly, I can't, I don't know where the video is on that. I'm really sorry. Another thing I should say really quickly is you guys, the comments that you send me, like, I don't know, like at least a third of them, I can see that you've commented. I can't click on the comment. It's not in my actual video. I'm not deleting it or anything. I can't respond to it. Nothing. So I can see that you sent me a comment. I can only read like the first half of it. You don't know how many comments were so interesting. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to read that. And I click on it and it's gone. Like, I don't know what is happening, but a third of your comments, I would say, are literally unreadable. They're not on my channel. I do not delete them. I cannot open them. So I don't know what's up with that. So I just want to let you guys know in case anyone thinks I'm being rude. So, or if I'm not responding or something, like sometimes I literally cannot respond. So, okay, back to this confirmation. So in the dream, Jesus looked through this little window and he said so much more. He said, these numbers are the difference between hunger and thirst and all these other things that I said a 12 year old doesn't know, like the difference between um, death and life and um, safety and danger and all these different things. So basically that's what he said about these numbers, 77781. And I go into that in the last video. Now, the confirmation is this. I, the day I made the video, saw this verse randomly, okay, in Song of Solomon. Now, Song of Solomon is very much a rapture book. And you guys know it. Most of you know it. It's very rapture meaning... It's about a Jewish guy trying to get a Gentile bride and going after her in the spring and figs. It's all about fig trees and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, basically, I don't know how this verse came upon me, but it was the day I was making the video. And isn't it funny that Song of Solomon, I might have said this last video, Song of Solomon, Song of Songs is SOS. And SOS means a rescue. I looked up the definition. SOS means to rescue. Okay. So anyway, it says, my beloved, it's so, oh, sorry, Song of Solomon 2.9. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. So the day I'm making the video, talking about my daughter and how him looking through the window seemed key, I find this verse that's like rapture, like a rapture um, <laughs> book. And I realized SOS, Song of Solomon, is a, a rescue. And then it's about Jesus looking through a window or showing himself through a lattice. And she was really clear. The funny thing is my daughter, every time I ask her about that dream, she reminds me, she goes, remember, he was looking through a small window in this White House. She always says that and reminds me. So I think the Lord was trying to really show me this. Now, here's the confirmation someone in the comments gave me. Okay, look at this comment. It says, at present, 699 subscribers. Okay, first, actually, I'd like to say something. I was stuck at 699 for a long time. I mean, I don't, it's not a big deal, but I notice subscriber counts. It's just, you can't not notice it. And I got stuck at 699 for a really long time. And it was so funny because I remember thinking, wow, it's been like, I don't know, like a month or I don't know. It felt like a really, really long time that it was at like 699, which was really funny. Um, and number one, thank you guys for 7,000 subscribers. I do love the people who subscribe to me. I care for all my subscribers. I'll pray for you guys. I love you guys. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for 7,000 people subscribing. I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, this is crazy, okay? At 699, which like I said, it was stuck at, 699 in Hebrew means a lattice and in Greek, a desiring. So so it says a 12 year old sees the Christ through a lattice and he is desiring his bride. Like, is that not absolutely what? <laughs> Thank you, Ted. Thank you so much. Okay. So like, oh my gosh, my, I was stuck at 699 and it means a lattice. When I posted the video, I was stuck at 699 and it meant a lattice. And I was, like I said, I was there for a long time. How could it be? that I'm stuck at a lattice and a desiring of his bride. I'm stuck at this thing where he looks through a lattice or a window. Song of Solomon is a lattice or a window. My 12 year old continually says, Jesus looked through a lattice or a window. Like I 
truly cannot see how that's not a confirmation that I was stuck at 699 and it's not even like I was at 699 for a minute I was there for a long time almost like it was like a beacon shining you'd be like oh whatever it's a coincidence I don't know that's a confirmation a lattice it means a lattice? How could it mean a lattice? Of all words in the entire world, how could it mean a lattice? When I said Song of Solomon, that day, the Lord led me to that verse, a uh, that, that the bridegroom will look through a lattice or a window looking for his bride. And my little, little girl says, I say little, little girl, <laughs> she's 13. <laughs> I thought he'd come for me before I have a teenager. I really thought Jesus would come. Anyway, regardless, my little, little girl, I still call her a baby. But anyway, my little girl, she could innocently dream of him looking through a little window, a lattice. That's not a coincidence. So to me, that was a confirmation of the dream, but like her, she, yeah. Anyway, there's no way that wasn't from the Lord. It was just too much, but there's other things that I could tell you about confirmation, stuff like that. But this one was, this was really cool. So that's number one I wanted to talk about. Something else cool somebody put in the comments says, um, from Jesus Save 726, don't know if you mentioned it, but 5781, the five and seven, is 12 and you mentioned three times seven, 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 seven is 21. Same thing backwards. And also this part, I'm sorry, but this is interesting. Five, seven, eight, one, the Jewish year we're in five plus seven plus eight, one plus one is 21. I mean, come on. How is the Gregorian and the Jewish year matching up like that? That five plus seven plus eight plus one is 21. And we're in year 21. Now, people who are not following my channel, who don't care about end times this way, they'd be like, you've lost it, okay? But after all we've been through and everything, that's crazy. I can't believe that the Jewish year all added up equals 21. So in my last video, I go into reasons why 21 is amazing. And like I said, yeah, like you can see the three sevens in her dream. Seven times three, seven, seven, seven is 21. And it relates to the year we're in. And he said, um, 777. And then he said 81. And she doesn't know what Jewish year we're in. But that 578 plus 1 equals 21. Wow. Jesus saves 726. That was really, really good. So I had to share these things with you guys. I would believe it would give you a thrill, would make you excited. And the first thing was to me a confirmation of the dream. But I'll also go into the calculator stuff with you because I really think it's important. And I think this comment deserves a good mention too. And I got so many good comments, you guys. Like, thank you so much for everything you guys do. But I really did want to mention this too because he said, Daniel also fasted for 21 weeks and then saw Jesus. I believe it's Daniel 10. So um, from what I read or remember, I don't think he fasted for 21 weeks. I think what it, the 21 was is that the angel came to Daniel and said that, I think, I think, I should have reread it. It takes 21 days for the angel to fight the, you know, king of Persia or spirit of Persia or some other demonic force. He had to fight him, the angel, to get to Daniel. So from the time that Daniel prayed and fasted, it took him 20, the angel, 21 days to get to him, I think. Maybe he also fasted for 21 days. I, I should have looked that up. But I'm pretty sure it took the angel 21 days to get to him. So I do find that interesting because it feels very like Michael situation, like Michael stands up. Um, at the time. So I just thought that was a notable mention that with the 21 again, that in Daniel, like there was that battle. I don't know how it relates or anything like that, but it is very interesting that we keep talking about the 21, 2021 20, and all this stuff. And my daughter's dream, seven's adding up to 21, five, seven, eight, one adding up to 21. And the angel was, you know, held back or um, busy for 21 days before he could go and help Daniel. So I don't know if that means anything, but that was interesting. So now to also talk about the calculation that I wanted to go into with you guys. So like I said at the beginning of the video, 2028 is the end. It's not the end of, um, it's not the end of the church age. It's the end of the tribulation, which begins the millennial reign. So, and it's the end, end of the fig tree generation. 73 years, Israel turning 73 years, it could be that we are raptured on May 14th or just before or any day now or whatever, um, because it all still makes a lot of sense, especially with the spring situation. But I know in June, I think the figs are ripe and fall from the trees, which is like Song of Solomon. So we still don't really know, obviously. But my point is that day can pass because I truly believe it's not going to be a typical, like, I don't, I don't believe the rapture is on a feast day. I don't believe the rapture is like on a special day, but I could be completely wrong. I don't know. But 
I have this feeling it's we're not going to be like sure of it. Like, oh, yeah, I knew it. Or I just don't get that feeling. But anyway, the point is, um, yeah, so 2028 is what we have to count back from using Jewish years, the 360 day years, because it that's what Daniel does. OK, so I'm it's going to it would take me too long to pull up the verses. Let's just I don't have the time to put all the slides together, but. Um, basically you guys know, Daniel talks about 1,260 days, 1,290 days, but blessed is he who comes to 1,335th day. So what he does is break the tribulation in two. 1,260 days is three and a half years, but it's biblical years. You guys can do the math yourself, but I'm going to go on timeanddate.com with you guys and you can see how I do it, but you can do the math yourself. 365 days times three and a half years is not 1,260 days. I don't have the calculator in front of me right now, but it's not. So Daniel says it'll be 1,260 days and he makes it clear it's a time, time and half a time, which is three and a half years. That means Daniel saying the tribulation is for sure going to be in Jewish years. Okay, and then he says the second part is 1,290 days, but blessed is he who comes to the 1,335th day. So that is three and a half years plus I think 45 days, okay? The point of the matter is it's, he he says a time, time and half time, which people have realized and calculated means three and a half years, but 1,260 days um, is not three and a half, 365 days. It's three and a half, 360 days. The Jewish years are 360 days, not 365. The reason this is important is because people think, <clears throat> okay, so with the fig tree generation, they think, well, as soon as Israel turns 73, we need exactly seven years from that day because they can't turn past 80. But if it's Jewish years, then no, the minute they turn 73, you have still some more time because it's shorter years. So it's seven years, but they're shorter years. So this is where I'm going to go to timeanddate.com and I'll show you what I mean. So here we're in timeanddate.com. So we can calculate um, some stuff. So I put in already September 21st, 2028, uh, which would be the Feast of Trumpets um, in 2028. And like I said, if that, like I believe it could be the second coming. Um, so if that's the case, I want to work my way back and see um, what is seven biblical years going backwards. I've done this before, but I think it's really important. So you could say add or you could say subtract. Now we want to subtract because we're working our way backwards. So let's put in the amount of days, including all the way up to the 1,335 days. So it's the 1,260 days. So that's three and a half biblical years, 360 day years, not 365 day years. And then 1,335 days because it says, um, blessed is he who can make it to the 1,335th day. So that gets you 1,260 days and 1,335 days get you to 2,595 five days. That's three and a half biblical years plus another three and a half biblical years plus the other, I think it's 45 days. So let's calculate the date and it brings you to um, August 14th, 2021. So, okay, let's talk about that. So as you see, if Feast of Trumpets 2028 is the second coming, then so that Jesus can fulfill all the fall feasts, then um, when you work your way back in the seven Jewish years, it brings you to August 14th. Now I did a whole video on that. I'm going to put it in the description box and the comment section. And so you can see what what I had said about August 14th, because it's kind of interesting. And it relates to something, a comet that's going through the sky right now and all this other things. Anyway, I had talked about August being the start of the tribulation date. I had also talked about a gap theory, meaning possibly the rapture happens in spring, there's a gap, and then the tribulation begins in September, and then, or sorry, August, <clears throat> August, and then goes to September 2028. Because remember, it doesn't have to start in September and end in September, because it's not seven Gregorian years. It's Jewish years. So it's just different. Anyway, that being said, um, yeah, the only part that I don't know about is it says 80 if by strength that the a generation 70, 80 if by strength. So 
Israel will be 80 in 2028. They don't have to be 80 by the second coming. Like they could be 79, 78, because remember, it just says that's a generation and that generation will not pass. If Israel becomes 81, 82, 83, then the, the generation will have passed. I say this because look like people who are born in 1948, they're not living, you know, a lot past 80. I mean, that's just not typical. Yes, people live to be 100 years old, of course, but typically people live in their 70s or 80s. And it even says the last years are trouble and sorrow. So basically after 70, it's kind of can be hard or that's what it's saying in that verse. But that relates to it being the tribulation that after 70 years is trouble and sorrow. But they already are 70 years. <laughs> They're turning 73. Anyway, all of that being said, that's the calculation I wanted to show you because I didn't want you to think, well, May 14th has to be the cutoff. It's definitely not the cutoff of the fig tree generation. It's just it's so impactful and huge that I would think it'd be a big possibility, but it's not the cutoff. So August seems more like the cutoff if the second coming is in Feast of Trumpets. Now, if the second coming is not in Feast of Trumpets, then there's a little bit more time. But that all said, I still believe in a spring rapture. Like that just makes the most spring or summer, like early summer. That makes the most sense to me. There's so many biblical clues to it and all that stuff. So I still see a gap theory. This is what I'm going to stick with. This is my story and I'm sticking with it for now. So, okay, yeah, I just wanted to explain that. But the one thing that I did want to say is I don't know when it is considered Israel turns 81 because is he using at that point 360 day years? Is he using 365 day years? When does Israel turn 81 in God's eyes? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> does he use their new year, the Nissan? Like what, like Nissan one is his real biblical new year. So Nissan won, what year do they turn 80? That's what I don't know. I would believe it'd be 2028. So it looks like April, I think, 2028, or sorry, springtime. So maybe, I don't know when Nissan won is in 2028. I didn't look that up, but that would probably be when they turn 80. But I could be wrong. I have to look that up. So I didn't do that. If anybody has any ideas about that, that'd be totally cool in the comments. Anyway, all that said is I just didn't want you guys to think there's a cutoff on May 14th. I did show you a verse where it seems very plausible that May 14th is a very important day, but May 14th has come and gone all these years. They turned 70, May 14th came and gone and went. So, but like I said, it, it doesn't have to be till August. Then you have seven biblical years brings you to Feast of Trumpets. Again, it doesn't even have to be a second coming at Feast of Trumpets, but this all is what I really believe. And again, I'm just believing there could be this gap. It makes sense because the tribulation begins with a covenant with many with from the Antichrist. He makes a covenant for seven biblical years that starts the tribulation. It has to start with like something. And from how I interpret it, it starts with that. He comes and makes a covenant for seven years. And then you start the 1,260 days and, you know, all that. So that being said, it would be really weird for the rapture to happen and immediately he makes a covenant. Like... I feel like the dust would have to settle, but I don't know. So I guess I'll leave it at that. I hope I didn't confuse too many people, but I just kind of felt like that was, I don't know, kind of important. And I did want to mention this whole lattice thing about what I saw in Song of Solomon, my daughter's dream, and that I was stuck at 699 and it actually means a lattice. How could that even be? Okay. And yeah, a lattice or a window. Basically, that's what she saw. And that's just like what I felt like God led me to that song, Solomon verse, right when I'm recording the video. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, I hope that was good for you guys. And that made sense. All the mathematical stuff. I don't love the math stuff and I definitely could have things wrong. Like I said, I'm a casual person. I don't, I'm not very specific. It's just my personality. So I might have some parts of it wrong there, but, um, most likely it's pretty right. <laughs> So I'll leave it at that. I hope it blessed you and I love you guys. And thank you again for 7,000 subscribers and I will talk to you again soon or see you in there. And then we can walk on this beach in the millennial rain for real. <laughs> okay. So talk to you soon. God bless and Shalom.
Diam kata saya